Uh, good afternoon and welcome to Perspectives on Energy. This is Guillermo Sabatier, Director of International Services at HSI. Joining us today is Susie Espling, Solutions Engineer, and Jill James, Chief Safety Officer, both from HSI. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Guillermo. Thank Thank you. So uh, let me let me introduce one of you first here. I've had the pleasure of getting to know Jill, not only in our conversations at work, but also through her podcast, The Accidental Safety Pro. Uh, Jill, would you tell us a little bit more about that and yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Guillermo. Happy to be here today. And thank you so much for having me. Um, I've been in the field of environmental health and safety for 28 years, which just sounds like bananas amount of time. And uh, here in the United States, I started out my career after graduate school working for OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, as an investigator for about 12 years, um, inspecting um, all types of workplaces in both general industry and construction. And then I moved into healthcare for a while and then into higher ed for a little bit and had a stop in the in the world of poultry, all things poultry and life sciences, um, before joining HSI as the chief safety officer eight years ago um, in August. And at HSI, I kind of have a foot in a couple different departments, um, mm -hmm. one in product and helping, helping out with uh, product development um, within our sales department. Uh, uh, team to uh, meet with prospects and our customers and kind of represent that buyer and speak their language to them. And then, of course, with our marketing department, um, creating helpful um, aids for um, prospects and customers and uh, especially a thing I'm really proud of called a safety training needs assessment, where mm -hmm. a person can take a little a little quiz and find out like where are our gaps, what are we forgetting we need to train on, particularly when it comes to compliance. And you're right, I've got a podcast, the Accidental <laughs> Safety Pro. It turned uh, four years old oh, wow. in May, which is fantastic, and I have the privilege and honor of talking with um, EHS professionals from around the globe about how they do their work, what motivates them, and they're sharing their best practices for our for my for my field of practice. And I get to be the keepers of their really phenomenal stories. Well, they're great stories to listen to, and I really, really enjoy listening to your podcast, which is why once again, I'm really, really grateful that you're able to join us on today's show. So we, we're going to have plenty to talk about. So I look forward to that. Susie, I've had the uh, great opportunity to work with you on several projects that uh, relate not only to the energy industry, but others as well. Now, I understand you are new now in a new role that puts you in a rather unique and precisely advantageous position for our discussion today. Would you want to tell us more about your journey? Sure. It's more of a windy path, um, <clears throat> but it's all related to online education, mm -hmm. training, and development. So first started out um, assisting with the development of the first online program at the University of Arizona for a master's and PhD program. And then from there, I kind of went more to the technical training side with power and utility industry, as well as the construction, technical trades. And I took a, a right turn, I guess, <laughs> and crossed over to the leadership management and professional de development side. Um, again, the common thread being e-learning, whether it be platforms, content, services, got about 24 years of experience and landed at HSI for the solutions engineer position. Um, I, it's just like the perfect place for me, um, I get to help our clients with training initiatives for reliability, safety, and productivity. So happy to be here with you. Well, thank. I'm really happy that you could join us, and, and I think we have the great mix of uh, of SMEs really to 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 join us in today's discussion. Um, and re the reasons we brought you here today really is is to talk about one of these uh these uh something really important happening, not, not just in the electric utility industry, right, but also across across all STEM fields. And, and what they're looking at is a, a looming shortfall of engineers in the workforce. Now, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, right, economic projections point to a need of approximately 1 million more STEM professionals than the U.S. will produce at the current rate by 2025. It's just not a long ways away. It's a lot of NP jobs, right, unfilled jobs. 
So this is uh, critically important, right? Uh, as a challenge, especially if we hope to remain competitive as a nation or a group of nations in this economy in science and technology, right? So what's worrisome, at least to me anyway, is that this also affects STEM-related roles, right? Not just in this industry, but across most others, especially when they're, when they're touched by STEM or technology one way or another. So for us, in this particular realm of expertise, workforce development right, becomes ever more important to not only attract and prepare new recruits, but also retain experienced employees. So how can HSI or companies like ours, right, uh, assist uh, customers and, and large corporations with this present and emergent need? So Susie, Joe, any answers to that? <laughs> right? Gosh, I wish we had a magic wand, right? Yeah, no. Th this yeah. this um this topic of um STEM comes up really often with the guests that I have on my podcast as well. You know, the EHS profession itself is part of STEM. And so um and and you know, we're we're unique in that there's not a lot of us, but everyone uniformly says, you know, we need, we need more people and we also need to encourage people. So the, the call to action with, with my podcast guests and people in my profession has been to really get the word, spread the word about environmental health and safety being mm -hmm. a STEM practice. And that, you know, it's not offered at every college and institution, but it is available, you know, in almost every state, then people can get um, educated in, in that particular profession. And so often my guests um, talk about how they're going back to their colleges, they're getting involved in their communities, they're talking at career days in high schools about the importance of the STEM um, world, particularly in health and safety. And, and then also the realization that, you know, you said, what'd you say, Guillermo? We have a million, a million, we're going to be short by a million. Projection and, of unfilled jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And so there are so many young women mm -hmm. who could be filling those roles right. who aren't part of this profession yet aren't part of the STEM profession. So for example, I have a college student right now who's um, studying computer engineering at a university. And in his class right now, there is exactly one woman studying computer wow. engineering. And it, that's just that's just bananas. And in, in my particular field of practice, only 10% of us are women. And wow. so, you know, what can we do as influencers, as fellow engineers, mm -hmm. as fellow, fellow STEM professionals to reach into... Um, you know, reach reach out to young women, what young women in particular in our communities, in our high schools, in our colleges, and encourage them and let them know, like, look at this world that could be open to you. You know, and it's a great it's a great profession. Well, it, it and it's interesting you mentioned the the, the STEM opening opening up STEM STEM uh, interest in STEM and opportunities in STEM for 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 women and even underserved communities because one yes. of the things that that, that I've, I've i've heard about that's been happening at one of the universities here in south florida florida international university and in conjunction with the city of miami it looks it looks like they are working on a project in which uh where the state matches scholarship funds where anybody who wants to go to the university will be able to go to FIU. Uh, any any resident mm -hmm. of the city of Miami will be able to attend FIU uh, should they should they should they wow. at least have the grades. And they and that's that's having access to the opportunity, right? So especially in underserved that's communities, right. that is a big deal. So access is everything. So so how can training help, for example, with workforce development in this particular aspect and field? Oh my gosh, so many ways, so many um, avenues to go down. Obviously, upskilling and cross-skilling is very essential. Um, onboarding, you know, when you hire an employee, how long does it take that employee to be a productive member of the mm -hmm. workforce, right? So um, training can help with onboarding as well as retention and promotion, right? How do we take those employees and start retaining them instead of them going to other positions, you know, creating those pathways, those career paths for those individuals. 
Um, we have our hypo or high potential employees um, that we want to try to start grooming to for the leadership and development roles, right? Leadership and management positions. Um, they need some extra skills to be able to manage those, you know, people managers, if mm -hmm. you will. Skill gap. We've got a lot of skill gap going on. Uh, succession planning, right? We have to figure out how we can uh, transfer that knowledge of our senior, most valuable employees um, because we need to learn from them. You know, some of them, I think um, that retirement is nearing and they think, oh, you know, I may not be as important, but they're actually the most important that we mm -hmm. have. And we need to figure out how we can take those experienced members and have them become mentors and coaches with training and share that knowledge. So there's so many ways that um, training can help all the way around. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it is rather interesting, right? Because uh, especially with, with the whole, with the succession planning, uh, mm -hmm. some of these senior employees, I mean, it takes almost four new, four new, uh, recruits i would say to, to actually fill that role when once yeah. they're fully trained so it's it's quite the challenge right yeah, absolutely right. yeah and you know what's what susie's talking about is this investment in the workforce right. um benefits benefits the entire company in building what people like to talk about as corporate culture right, right. and right. so if employees know that the employer is willing to invest in them and invest in them for the whole of their employment, not just for onboarding, but for the whole of their employment to continue building their skills. Mm -hmm. That is an investment in your corporate culture, which, you know, shorthand means we care, you know, like we care about you as an, as an employer, we care about you as a human being. Yeah. And, and that is really important. And only from the, I mean, even from the sense of employee engagement, right? And and, mm -hmm. and so that that is that is really crucial when it comes to that because then you're looking at a at a there's opportunities ahead, especially when you're when you're employed somewhere and you're working, you give it all you've got, right? So that, there's that 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 relational sort of it's, it's not transactional, it's more relational right? when, when when you're in that workforce. So how does this translate across other industries, right, and the economy in general? So. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of industries, not just your power and utility, they're dealing with the same challenges, right? The skills that are transferable, um, having career paths so that, you know, they can work um, in different parts of the organization, um, mm -hmm. you know, power and utility is very similar to uh construction, municipalities, right. manufacturing, right? Whether it's food or beverage, metals, pulp and paper, automotive, electronics. I mean, just that whole um, level of manufacturing. They're, they're very similar in nature. Right. Oil, right. gas, you know, petrochemical, pharma. Um, we also really need to try to work more with your local colleges, vocational mm -hmm. training programs, job course centers, um, and get additional training in those areas so that we we don't see that million, you know, vacancy right. rate um, that you right. were talking about. So yeah, the infrastructure of our economy, you know, it, it touches every single part of it. Right. Well, and, and one of the things too is, is given that shortage, uh, one of the predictions is that, that it, it's industries will begin to poach from each other when it comes to that 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 uh that experience and trained workforce so so it'll be a great time to be an engineer but the thing is <laughs> it's not, not the industry will definitely you know be in serious need for that so yeah right i mean i think it's so important to to, to not to not forget that mm -hmm. all employees matter all employees have a right to yes. a, a safe and healthy workplace including the tools they need to be able to do that job safely regardless of the industry that that they're in you know i'm i'm often asked well who does hsi serve you know and mm -hmm. susie just rattled off definitely a lot of key industries but the but the real answer is everyone you know everyone when we when we onboard a new employee at hsi they say jill jill you know who do we who do we serve who do we serve and i said think back to your first job 
Think back to the first thing, the first job you ever did to earn a paycheck and people will rattle off things like I worked in agriculture, I worked in construction, I was a barista, you know, uh, uh, I worked at, I worked at a fast food industry and I tell them, you know, I was a, I was a maid in a hotel cleaning, cleaning rooms. And then the next question I ask, you know, when we were kids, when we had those first jobs, how many of us had health and safety training, you know, and the room almost always falls silent. And then we talk about the hazards and the stories and the things we remember that happened to us when we were kids. And, and, you know, the, the, the thing is that every single human being, regardless of where they work, regardless of their age has, you know, they have an inherent right to be treated well right. and to have the information tools and training they need to be able to go home the same way that they arrived at any point in their working career at any point. And that's really who we serve. Yeah, and that and that is so true. So so um. Now, now we've covered quite quite a wide berth when it comes to to industries and what the industry's needs are. So, how can HSI help uh, in in this regard? Mm. Is this is this Guillermo where we really get to talk about everything that we do and and we'll try not to be like a commercial? I don't think we have time. We don't have time to be commercial. That's right. That's right. We're running out of time. All right. So, you know, HSI really is uniquely positioned for our customers for today's market, like you're talking about. As our CEO likes to say, we sit at the crossroads of content, meaning training and learning and software. Mm -hmm. And that's really unique because we have both, you know, software and content, and we're solid and strong in each. And everything that we have, we create on our own with the horsepower of over 500 skilled employees across the globe, including the three of us, right? <laughs> and so when when HSI started out as a baby, baby company some 40 years ago, we were focused on first aid and CPR training, and people might not know that about us, uh, but we're much more than that today. And yet we remain strong to those roots in first aid and CPR and right. are one of the three largest nationally recognized providers of those services, along with American Heart Association mm -hmm. and the Red Cross. And so our authorized instructors use our curriculum to train and certify millions of people every year in over 100 countries which is just amazing and then and then we branched out we branched out even further and mm -hmm. focused and our focus landed in the ehns space the environmental health and safety space like like mine um, enabling the work of people like me to have access to a chemical management system including everything safety data sheet which our listeners know all about those <laughs> and help with environmental compliance reporting and then working alongside OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, we became one of just a handful of providers authorized to offer the OSHA 10 and 30 hour general industry and construction certifications um, that are online in both Spanish and English. And by the time I came about and eight years ago and joined HSI, we had this giant library of OSHA compliance-based training courses, all delivered from our learning management system or from our customer's learning management system. And today, mm -hmm. that library of courses isn't giant, it's ginormous. <laughs> and, and the topics covered stretch way past OSHA compliance now. And, uh, you know, to, to be able to please EHS people like me and into topics that support other disciplines mm -hmm. and cross-functional initiatives. And we have content on diversity and equity and inclusion and resilience and leadership, like how to run a meeting or have a difficult conversation and sexual harassment prevention and computer security and hazardous waste management. And, you know, it goes on and on from de-escalation techniques and active shooter response and bleeding control and software skills. And, you know, all these topics that are, you know, and, and all the topics that are specific to the utilities industry that Susie's talking about today. Mm -hmm. And that's just a sample of content that we have for episodic training and ongoing learning. Um, all of which is delivered in multiple platforms, from multiple formats rather, from online interactive to video to blended learning and and even in person learning, which is a lot of what what Susie's team does and your team, Guillermo. So, I don't know. I've been around for a while now, and I just kept dreaming, like, what's up next for HSI? What are we going to do next? Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, what would really be helpful were things for people to do audits and inspections and 
what, you know, what could they use to manage assets or track injuries and illnesses or follow a checklist or maintain and share all of those policies and procedures that we all have to, we all have to have. Right. And, you know, instead of having things in tablets of paper or buried in email or stuck in a three ring binder or something. Um, so that's when um, HSI's EHS software platform came to life. And it's, it's really exciting how it's helping support not only EHS people, but engineering and maintenance and security. And uh, it's all being done from a single sign-on. Oh, I love that. And yeah. yeah, and I and I get to use it quite a bit. I mean, uh, I myself uh, help with, with delivering some of the training, uh, especially when, when there's a lot of courses and not enough instructors. So, I mean, my career had been training for the last 10 years. So I, I get to deliver that. And, and yeah, I'm doing that in three different uh, sessions coming up in the next few months. So definitely enjoy. And we we even have live simulation during classes, which is really helpful for these operators. So always fun to do that. Mm -hmm. Always fun. So so, uh, what does HSI offer, not just for workforce development, but other needs, right, Susie, I think? Yeah, I mean, you know, all the topics that Jill mentioned, CPR, safety, employee development, productivity, but it's really the combination of the solutions, right? The learning, you know, management system, mm -hmm. the safety data system, the um, safety management system, but really what, what it, how I think we need to start looking at it more mm -hmm. is how can we get better engagement from our employees, right. you know, in addition to the regulatory compliance and the paper trails, right? Um, but the questions need to be asked. How is it making our organizations better, right? right? Are we having fewer incidents? How do we know that if we're not tracking it? Are we more pro pro um, productive? You know, are we proactive or are we mm -hmm. reactive? So if we start seeing and because we're documenting it and we have a system to be able to organize that data, you know, we can be more proactive instead of reactive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is our facility more reliable? Um, you know, is there less downtime? So what happens when production stops in a manufacturing mm -hmm. um, environment, right? Um, that's loss of revenue period. That should be tracked. Uh, we want to make sure that our products are quality. Um, you know, think about the systems behind it from a strategic standpoint. Right. How do we improve the organization while making sure that we maintain a safe, you know, work environment? So I think it's just all the different solutions and content that we can pull together that makes sense to the organization. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think about solutions wise and what can we prove up, um, Susie? You know, mm -hmm. you think about like, just take one tiny piece, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe it's you're doing an audit and you're using a piece of technology to do that audit and you have multiple locations and maybe in the Wayback Machine, you did that on paper and you were you, you to get things fixed, mm -hmm. something, an outlier you found fixed, it was an email, a phone call, you know, essentially passing notes. Whereas with a piece of automation, you can push those notices out and you can also alert other locations that might have same or similar that right. can correct things in real time. And you, you'll be able to track and see that, uh, you know, you have visibility into that rather than finding, you know, did we put that in a spreadsheet document or is that in somebody's post-it note on a desk, you know, and okay. being able to have visibility into that. <laughs> Well, and it's and it's really important to capture so many of these different aspects. I mean, one of the things that 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 I remember when I was in the utility industry, right? Uh, uh, and and we were using an HSI product at the time, and, and they they started capturing near misses. Mm -hmm. So so th those were just as important, if not more important, because a near miss just means you were lucky, right? And, and that that was an important thing to actually quantify. And, and then once they began to address the near misses, right, uh, it, it's it's the overall injuries went down even further, and they ended up with, with a goal of zero all the time, which is which became achievable, especially in, in a in a power company. Right, we usually there's sadly there's always somebody getting hurt, some or there was somebody getting hurt that that for a while was rather successful, and because of that, so interesting. So uh, 
one of the things that we talked about in, in another conversation we had was also education when it came to micro credentialing, right? And, and we talked about about that quite a bit. Um, Joey, you want to talk a, a little bit more about that, or because remember we 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 got excited about the idea of being able to offer that. And yeah, know. Susie, I think that was your wheelhouse. I think oh, when sorry. we talked it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know that there's the programs are out there, but there's not as many as we need, right, right, to train and get ready the workforce. So, you know, for example, there's a six to eight month waiting period before someone right, right. can, you know, start a new program. But micro credentialing is, um, you know, a specific part of a program that then that employee can start working, right, and continue their education and planning. So um, Google, Amazon, they're all starting mm -hmm. to kind of look at this micro-credentialing because, you know, it's a little bit selfish because they're trying to fill their positions. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we need to start looking at, you know, like this, you know, not only in power and utility, but manufacturing, all of those industrial skills, right. you know, focused um, professions. I mean, you know, it, and it was interesting because something as 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 core business that we have really it's it's a CPR instructor certification, right? Mm -hmm. It is it is. I mean that that is we quite we have quite the presence. The other day I was talking to one of my childhood friends and uh, planning something unrelated to work, and yet you know we're we're talking about him having a class of CPR training, and then I asked him, hey, who are you certified with? And he said, well, HSI. I'm like, wow, small world. I work for them, so. <laughs> and you know, for as long as he's known me after after college, he was always well, I've always worked for 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 the utilities. Not now I'm working for the training company that supports not just the utilities, but a whole lot of other fields, right? So mm -hmm. it was it was rather heartwarming to hear that his certifications on that. So so anyway, so now those conversations about you know seeing we we could actually use him for localized uh, live instructor delivery of that training here in in in, in my region. So it should be nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a great story. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So um, we have quite a few things, right? Where, where uh, we got some white papers, some webinars here at HSI. I think we have slide number four we wanted to show. If uh, Eric doesn't mind throwing it up there for a minute. Can we see yeah, that? Yeah, and I, I invite you to go see our website, hsi.com, but Yes, we have content. Yes, we talk about all our solutions and everything. But honestly, check out the resource tab. Not only will you see the wonderful Jill in her Accidental Safety Pro podcast that are <laughs> fabulous, right? But we have other things like checklists for diversity, inclusion, and mm -hmm. equity. Um, we have uh, guides to onboarding, right? How do you build an onboarding program? How do we get um, those individuals trained in instead of six weeks? How can we get it down to three weeks and get them more productive? Um, we have ebooks, right? We right. have topics right. such as the cost of not training, um, qualified electrical worker webinar. I really encourage you to, to see that because you would be amazed at how many people need training mm -hmm. specifically for electrical workers, um, labor shortages, skill jobs. There's, there's a plethora of resources there. And I really invite you to just kind of cruise around in there and see what interests you and how we can help. All right. So hsi.com. That's uh that's our corporate website where you can find a lot of help and resources for uh, not just training but a whole lot of other fields as well, right? And that's so um yeah, so kind of one of our last questions, right? So what resources do we have available to quantify talent shortfalls in in this industry or or, or any really, right? Mm -hmm. So and that's part of the consulting process that comes in, right? I imagine yeah. Right, exactly. Susie, I'm sure you have an answer. Maybe we can both take a crack at it. But you know, I I really I really see HSI as we're positioned um today as mm -hmm. being that that um that option to help each customer build a resilient organization. Right. And resilient organization meaning they are employees who are well trained, skilled, you know, who are gonna who are gonna stick with you and you know be able to help help them um, upskill themselves throughout the lifetime of their of their career with you as the employer wonderful yeah wonderful. and and don't forget you know keep that strategy in mind keep training in the forefront of it not as an afterthought 
Um, you don't mm. do it because you have to do it. Do it because you want to do it and you want to invest in your employees. So, um, you know, keep this, align that strategy with, you know, mm. with your, with your, you know, initiatives. And I think you'll um, find much better results. You'll find more engaged employees and, you know, much better products on the other end of it. Thank you. I, I, I definitely agree. So, 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 Joe, uh, any any closing comments? If we're yeah, clo closing closing comments, right? Um, <laughs> uh, so, I guess you know, like like Susie said, strategy in mind, absolutely. And remember that there there's just so many partners that are available mm -hmm. for as help aids to employers. I know that there are. So many of us, when we think about, gosh, how many, how many partners do we have? How many vendors are we using? You know, and we hear from companies who are saying, oh, you know, we have this one for this and this one for this. And pretty soon you've rattled off 14 different, mm -hmm. different vendors that you're working with. And remember that, um, you know, more and more um, companies are, are becoming uh, like HSI, where you can just have all of those things found under one roof with one single sign on for your employees. Right. So you're not trying to manage all these different types of software services. Um, to be that help aid for you, and you can really have visibility across your organization with um, with one company. And that that becomes also rather important when it comes to uh, just from a mere view uh, perspective of documentation, right? And just mm -hmm. making sure and oh, having the right. same platform, having the same evidence, having the same uh, dashboarding. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yeah. precisely. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. I think we could probably have a few more episodes ju just on, on, on these conversations for workforce development and labor shortfalls and, and what our industries are facing coming up. So, but uh, I thank you so much for, for coming on today's show. And I really appreciate it. I, I, again, these 30 minutes just fly by. I mean, and it seems like we can just go on forever because we have a lot to talk about really. And we just scratched the surface on what we offer at HSI. Um, again, hsi.com is where you, know, you want to go and find the more information and look at our resources, you know, for to help you with your workforce development needs, among other things, right? Well, Thanks, thank Guillermo. So Thanks so yeah. much. Thank, thank you, Susie. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.